Hi everyone. So today we're going to make this fun haunted house scene using the Little Boo Agenda stamp set by Mama Elephant. And to make the haunted house in the background, that is actually not a stamp, but it is an image that we are going to put together ourselves just using some stencils that we make in simple shapes, specifically triangles and rectangles. And we're going to put those shapes together to build four stencils that are gonna help us make this cute, adorable little house that the little ghosts are inside and hovering around. So to get started, I'm just gonna show you quickly what the shapes are and they have the measurements written on them. The measurements are based on the assumption that you'll be making an A2 size card. So if you do make this card, just screenshot that image just so that you can um, see what the proper measurements are to make your own stencils. So let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna stamp the little witchy ghost um, down towards the bottom of the scene. And then we're going to build a little mound for her to stand on. And I just use my tape that I had on hand to give me that nice little half moon shape to surround our little witch. And then we're gonna take the two arrows that we made stencils for. And we're going to arrange them on either side of the witch. And we're gonna have their bases stop off right when they hit the foot of the, the little mound. So that's why we drew in the mound first before drawing in the haunted house or the first parts of the haunted house. Next, we're gonna take our rectangle stencil and just put it square in the center of the scene. And we're gonna put the roof right on top of that and just fill it in in black. And I'm using a Copic multi-liner in size 0.5. I think um, size 0.3 would work well here also. And then finally, we're gonna put the top of the house on. And I had to um, just kind of push down the top of it a little bit because it would have gone off the page. And that's fine. You can kind of mix and match the stencils however it fits best into your card design. And then we're gonna just color in the little mound that we drew in with a black Copic multi-liner. And then that's it. So look how easy that is. We just drew a haunted house and it took less than a minute and a half. So I really urge you to give this design a try. And I think that there's lots of other types of haunted house designs that you could build using these simple concepts of just breaking down your house into what are its various little components and then drawing each component on its own and then putting them together. It's much less daunting when you approach drawing this way. When I first tried to draw the haunted house, I just tried to freehand it based on an image that I had seen in, in Google images of another drawing. And I felt that it was really hard and difficult. And, um, but then when I looked at it, I was like, hey, it's just a collection of triangles and rectangles. So why don't we break it down a little? And then I did that and it was so much easier to put this design together, taking that approach of just breaking down the, the components. So I urge you to, you know, if there's something you really wanna do, but it seems overwhelming, just try to break it down into small parts and you might be able to find a way to make it doable. So now we're gonna add some decoration to the roof of our haunted house. And we're gonna draw little half circles, rows of half circles, and we're gonna stagger them so that our circles, the way that I try to remember it is that when you start your line, you wanna start it right in the center of the circle on top of it, and then end at the center of the circle next to it. And if you do that, you'll be fine. And even if you make some mistakes, and the most likely mistake that you'll make is to draw a circle right on, on top of each other. That's fine, just keep going because this is a pretty forgiving design. You're not gonna notice if the scales are perfect. This technique is also good if you want to draw scales onto a mermaid. So this is a mermaid tail design. You can use it for shingles on a roof like we're doing here. So lots of different ways to use this one simple little technique. And I usually start at the top of the image that I'm coloring and then I work my way down. And again, just staggering those circles as we go along. I'm gonna speed up a little bit since you get the, you get the gist of it now. 
And then once we're done drawing in the little shingles, then we're gonna start on our background. And I'm gonna draw in a moon in the upper right-hand corner. And I'm just gonna use my washi tape because um, it was right nearby. So instead of going and making a stencil using a hole punch or something like that, I just used a round object nearby me. And that's about an inch and a half, I would say, around. So if you have an inch and a half circle punch, that would work. If you have a two inch one, that would work too, even one inch. So just go with what you have. Or if you have a little round object around that you could use to trace the moon, that is good too. So around the base of the moon, we're going to put some BG000. And then we're going to start coloring in the darkest areas of the scene with a BG09. So we're going to have this really, really pretty, deep, bright blue-green sky at the end of, um, by the time we're done making this card. And then I'm going to show you another option that uses a duller version of a blue-green to see how you like that. Maybe you would like to copy that style instead. We're also going to um, make another card that has a different colored house. So the house we're going to make here has purplish tones and then the other example I'm going to show you has some blue tones. So if you're making the card for someone who loves the color blue, you could use the blue version. If you're making the card for someone who loves pinks and purples, then you could use this version that we're going to make on screen. So the method I'm using here with the background is I'm just making the bottom of the scene darkest and then working my way up with my lighter blue-green colors. And then once I got to the bottom, I didn't think that the blue-greens blended all that well, so I'm just going over with another coating of the blue-green using some darker shades this time until I get all the way up to the top of the scene with my BG02. And then I'm just gonna reinforce that little shine around the moon with my BG000. And now it's time to start coloring in the house. So. For the house, we're going to use RV91, 93, 95, and 99. And I'm going to start just by coloring in the entire base of the house with RV91. And I didn't mask these images, um, so I'm just trying to be careful coloring around them. So I just adore these cute little ghost images by Mama Elephant. I bought this stamp set maybe a few weeks ago and I've been dying to use it, but I just didn't have the right idea for a project until um, I came up with this haunted house idea. So there are, I think, 12 different little ghosts that you can choose from to fill in your scene. So you don't have to use the ones I used here. You can use some others that are in the set as well. For the shading on the roof, I am trying to go in the direction of the moonlight. So any part of the roof that's going to be hit by the moonlight, I'm making that lighter. So that's why you might notice some of my crazy little scribbles in the beginning with the lighter gray um, at the points that are closest to the moon and then the darker gray at, on the points of the roof that are farthest away from the moon. And my shading is probably looking a little bit messy on the roof right now, but that's okay. What um, I was trying to do here was map out the areas that are definitely going to be the lightest with the lightest markers and then roughly sketch out um, the mid-tones and then kind of go over that with my dark color. And then once I got to my dark color, the idea was I would clean up my shading at that point. I find that if I kind of use that approach of doing my mapping with my lightest color, it gives me more confidence to kind of play around and try some new shadowing techniques that maybe otherwise I wouldn't have if I started doing my mapping with the darker color. Because once you start with a darker color, you're kind of married to it. You, you know, you can always go darker, but it's harder to go lighter after you've started something dark. So that's just a little tip that I will give to people if you want to kind of try out some new shadowing techniques, maybe start mapping out the lightest area with your lighter markers. And that's assuming that you don't want your lightest area to be um, just white, in which case then I guess you would have to um, work around those areas maybe with your, with your lightest marker. Um, another piece of advice I have for anyone who is 
just starting with Copics or you're kind of been using Copics for a while and you're maybe a little bit frustrated with where your skills are at this point or maybe you feel like you're in a rut and you're not really seeing much improvement in your coloring, you know, just try to be as loose as you can um, when you're coloring. If you've been coloring for a while, if you've been watching my videos for a while or other artists videos on YouTube, you know how to shade at this point. You understand that a light color blends into a mid-tone and a mid-tone blends into a dark and that those are the basic rules of, of shading. Um, so you know that, so have confidence in that. So when you are doing your own shading, just try to start going more quickly and just be loose. That's my, my best advice that I could give is, is be loose. I think the one thing that's really noticeable in someone's coloring is when they're too tight and controlled. You can just tell, you can see it on the page that the person didn't feel confident with what they were doing. They were a little bit um, self-conscious and you know, that's not something that we want to portray in our artwork. We kind of want our emotion and our feeling and our love of the craft to come through. And the only way to do that is to um, try to train yourself not to feel self-conscious about things, to feel when you sit down, you know, at your desk and you're drawing, you're engaging in an activity that you're engaging your soul, you're doing something out of love, you're usually making something for someone that you care about. So you should be kind of triggering all of the positive aspects that you have of yourself, not the ones telling you, I can't do this, I'm not good enough or anything negative. So just get rid of all that and try to be loose and confident and just, you know, see how, see how it goes. So, okay, we are almost done coloring in our scene and I'm just gonna color in the little images now. I simply adore these little ghost images. I think there's about 12, maybe 12 to 15 different images that are in the Mama Elephant's Little Boo Agenda stamp set. And I picked out my favorites and I kind of assembled them all around the scene. So we have our little witch who is standing in front of the haunted house. And then we have a little ghost with a balloon who's on the left hand side. Then we have another ghost with a pumpkin on its head, which is so sweet. And then a little baby girl ghost in the window and a little mummy next to her and I thought we would give him mummy skin so we're going to color that in with YG 91 and 93 which I think are also good if you're going to be making zombies this year the YG 90s family is a really really good color combination for zombies and other undead things vampires too I think would look good with that Frankenstein maybe maybe you want to go a little bit brighter greens with him um, so what I'm doing here I decided that I wanted to add some more shadows on the front of my house or the bottom part. So I'm just going over everything with a C5 and a C3 and just kind of glazing the lower portion of the house. And I was just playing, I just wanted to see how that would look. And I kind of like it. And I think that it makes that center of the house right underneath the little um, mummy and the little baby girl kind of pop even more in the moonlight. So. Um, now I'm just adding a little bit of shading to the ghosts because I felt that with all the shading all over the scene, it would look strange if they were just stark white. And also I was a little sloppy around some of them, so I had to add some, some dark gray just to cover up the, um, the parts where they kind of got colored in with whatever was behind them. And now we're just about done here. I'm just gonna add some shading to the moon and it's been a while since I've made a moon, so my moon shading is a little bit shaky, but that's all right. And again, I'm just trying to smooth out the color in the background. And then that's it. So now we're gonna peel off the painter's tape. And the painter's tape, I love the little white edging that I get around my cards when I, I do it this way. And also it helps me to stabilize the paper when I'm coloring on video so that it doesn't bounce around everywhere and it's easier on all of your eyes to watch. So that's why I kind of use the painter's tape. And now there are three little sentiments that are in the Little Boo Agenda stamp set and I decided to use all of them. So we have Boo, Booya, and I Love My Boo. And then we're just gonna stamp them with some Versamark ink and then go over it with some white embossing powder. And then heat set it and then I think that is going to be it for this card. So 
Now, again, going over this with my heat gun. Sorry for the blur there for a second. And then I just flipped it over because it got a little bit warped, so I wanted to even things out. And now that looks good to me. Now I'm just gonna flip everything over and we're going to adhere our card panel to an A2 size card base. And the card panel is done with Express It blending card and then I just attached it to a Nina Solar White 110 pound cardstock base. Then I'm gonna add some little white highlights to the witch hat, the little balloon, the broom, the pumpkin. I'm gonna add some little dots to the little girl's bow a little bit to the candy and the brim of the hat. And then finally, I'm gonna take my black glaze pen and dot the eyes on the ghost. Now, the ghost eyes are more of an oval shape than a round shape, so I, if I had to do this over again, I would have left that off because I feel like um, the ghost eyes probably look better on glaze. So that's just something to keep in mind. So. This is the second version of the card that I made with the blue undertone. So I used B37 and 39 for that house. And then this is the one we made in the video with the purpler tone. So um, I'd love to hear which one you like better. So just leave me a comment below letting me know. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, um, I ask that you consider doing so. We are approaching the fall and the Christmas card season, and I expect to have lots of content up in the coming months on Christmas cards and other autumn themed cards. So please be sure to subscribe if that sounds interesting to you. Otherwise, have a great day, everyone. Well, not otherwise, also, and in, and in addition to have a great day, everyone, and I will see you again in the next video.